In the last section, we were talking about and developing our simple wallet. Now, our simple wallet is just some Solidity code that is developed right now in Remix, and we can deploy it with MetaMask to different networks and use this injected web free environment here. But that's all a little bit boring. It still feels very prototypey, and it's not really what you want to do when you are working on bigger projects or in teams. Now, let me introduce you something else, which you probably like much more if you want to work uh, with larger projects. And that is the Truffle Framework. If you go to truffleframework.com and uh, open this in your browser, then you will see this website here and Truffle. Basically, the Truffle suite consists of three large um, tools or, or three large uh, projects right now. One is the Truffle framework, the project, uh, which was initially the project from Truffle. Then there is Ganache, which we already used, uh, which is like a, a blockchain simulation in the in memory. And then there's the third one, which is Drizzle. It's a React uh, component, which helps you uh, with uh, reactive websites uh, to keep them updated by rerunning all the transactions that happened in uh, a smart contract locally in your browser again. Uh, pretty cool stuff. And I want to get started with the Truffle framework. So I'm hitting Truffle and now we are on truffleframework.com slash Truffle. And I mean, besides the features um, which are here on the website, there is also this uh, installation guide. And I just copy that and I will later paste it into my PowerShell window. Let me talk a little bit about Truffle. What is Truffle actually? Truffle is uh, a JavaScript package uh, which comes with the Node Package Manager NPM um, and is getting installed on your computer locally, globally with the dash G parameter. And then we'll sit there and uh, you have a new uh, executable command called Truffle which you can then use to work in a specific directory. And that directory has a specific structure, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. But now let's talk first about the features. First, uh, the smart contract lifecycle management. This is done by using so-called artifacts. So um, when you might have heard or might have not heard about these uh, ABI arrays, then uh, you need to copy them, you need to put them into a website, you need to work with web free and so on. All of this is uh, falling away completely uh, done with Truffle automatically. So all the magic that Truffle is really doing is helping you to keep your smart contracts in with the latest version if you deploy more of them uh, during um, development. Uh, keeping them up to date so you don't have to, to worry about uh, copying any ABI arrays or any addresses. So that's all in what Truffle calls an artifact. I'm going to show you this in a second. Um, you have the automated contract testing, and that's a huge thing. So with Truffle, you get a testing uh, suite where you can write both JavaScript and Solidity tests. They are using Mocha and Chai for assertions. So um, all of this is very, very easy with Truffle and then runs against maybe a Ganache or maybe even the internal Truffle developer console. You have scriptable deployment and migrations. What that means is instead of taking your Solidity code, uh, putting it into Remix, going over to the Run tab, making sure you have the right account, putting in any constructor arguments, hitting deploy, taking that address, maybe working with a second smart contract that needs this smart contract and so on, uh, Truffle, makes it extremely easy to just use these migration scripts. And I'm going to show you this also in the next lecture. Uh, if you're working with different uh, networks, maybe you have your local developer network with Ganache, maybe you have um, a, a consortium network with other teams or something, and then the Robston network, the Rinkeby network, the Live network, and so on. So uh, all of this is going into a Truffle.js config file. And then from there, you can simply uh, work with the networks by name. So you can just say, I want to deploy 
my smart contracts into my dev network and Truffle will take care of uh, looking for the right network in your config file. There is an interactive console and you can also use external script runners. So now let's go ahead and install Truffle in the next uh, lecture. In this lecture, I really want to start with the Truffle installation. And this is very, very easy if you have already Node installed or the Node package manager. And you can test this by opening a PowerShell on Windows or a terminal uh, or a shell or something on Linux and Mac. And then just type in npm v and it should output you the version. I have the version 6.4.1. Yeah, as long as you have some version, it should be fine. Uh, just if you have uh, no command that, or if you have an error that says command could not be found, then you might want to head over to the uh, Node.js website, uh, Node.js.org, and then go to the download section uh, for your operating system and download uh, the right Node.js version. Um, I've done this already, and it's a, a prerequisite for the course. And I will just continue assuming that you have Node installed. Now, when you have Node installed, then you can just open a PowerShell Windows anywhere in your system uh, or a terminal. Works uh, both the same on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And you basically just copy this command npm install truffle g into your uh, console or your terminal and hit enter. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be an empty folder because that dash G will install Truffle globally on your operating system. It doesn't do any modifications in the folder where you are. So it's really just a global installer. And then uh, all you have to do is wait until this is finished. The current latest version of Truffle is z uh, 500, which comes with the latest version of Solidity 050. So, um, it was uh, in beta until last week. We have currently end of December 2018. So, um, and now it's in version 5.0.0 and uh, already comes with the newest Solidity compiler, just as a side note. Okay, now you have Truffle installed, but how are you actually going to use it? Uh, that's an interesting question that I want to cover in the next lecture. So here's how you can start using Truffle. And Truffle is really a command line tool. So you have to type in uh, on the command line. I'm going to show you a couple of things. So the first one is uh, you have to be in an empty directory. So on Windows, I just hit D or I think LS is also working. On Windows, uh, Mac or on Linux, you want to hit LS in the terminal and it should output you an empty directory. And from there, you can start typing Truffle commands. And I think there is a Truffle help that will output you all the commands that Truffle can do. And those are the things that we are going to use now. So the first one that we want to use is Truffle init. And that's going to initialize a new and empty Ethereum project in this directory where you are. So just make sure that this is empty. And from there, you usually want to do um, a Truffle uh, migrate in order to migrate your smart contracts, which is the same as deploy now, or compile, or if you have any configuration, a Truffle build, but that's uh, actually already deprecated. So let's just uh, start with uh, Truffle in it, and it will initialize a new empty Truffle project in the directory where we are currently are. And it does this by downloading a specific GitHub repository. Uh, it's called the Truffle init repository, and then just running npm install uh, on that, and then that's it. So uh, all there is really are these three folders, contracts, migrations, test, and Truffle config. And I've also opened this here uh, in Windows in my Explorer, so you can see the same three folders and a config file. So how does that work now? Why is there a specific uh, directory structure? That's something we are going to discuss in the next lecture. All right, let me tell you in this lecture a little bit more about the folder structure of Truffle. 
because it's it's actually very straightforward. In your contracts folder are all your smart contracts. And there's currently one smart contract in there because Truffle will track um, so-called migrations from your smart contracts. So let's say you're working on a project that has 10 smart contracts and you're modifying only one. Uh, you might want to save some gas because you don't need to redeploy all the other nine smart contracts unless they are somehow dependent on each other. So uh, in the migrations file uh, that's used by Truffle itself, you shouldn't delete it, uh, are the, the migrations, the deployments track that Truffle is doing. In the migrations folder, there are the configuration files for the deployment of your smart contracts. So those are JavaScript files. And in a second, I will show you how these look like. Then in the tests folder is uh, your uh, unit tests. And I will show you in a separate lecture how those unit tests are written. All right. And last but not least, there is the Truffle config.js file. This is the config file for Truffle in order to understand where are the networks, how your smart contracts are going to be deployed. Are there any other uh, uh, build scripts or, or any pipelines that uh, Truffle needs to use and so on. So all of that is coming into this JavaScript uh, JS, Truffle config JS file. Now let me open um, this folder in my Visual Studio code. I'm doing this by hitting, I have Visual Studio Code installed system-wide, and I asked uh, Visual Studio during the installation to add this context menu item. But you can basically just open Visual Studio Code uh, and go to the uh, your folder where you have installed Truffle. All right. And as you can see, I have uh, added some zoom here, so everything looks a little bit bigger than before, or maybe on your system, so you can see it better um screen okay here are here's my directory structure right you have the contracts and the migrations the test and the config js now comes the big question and that's going to be a lab challenge now where are you going to put the simple wallet from remix into your new project from truffle and if you want to do this lab challenge it's not going to be very hard pretty straightforward, then pause the video now, or else just follow along. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we create a new file that's called simplewallet.sol. And we are going to copy our simple wallet from Remix, and we are pasting it into our uh, Visual Studio code into our our um, Truffle project. Now this is done. Uh, then let's have a look into the migrations and the migrations. There is already a script for the migrations. It looks like this. Uh, there's this artifact that is going to be required. And what happens internally is that Truffle is going to compile these smart contracts and is going to put them into a build folder. And then from there, it's requiring these artifacts. Uh, they are actually JSON files and taking these and deploying the, the bytecode, the data part of that with this deployer, which is automatically available during uh, the migrations here. So what happens during deployer deploy is uh, it will take the bytecode, it will put it onto the blockchain and it will take the address that is uh, created by the deployment and is going to add those, write those back into the JSON files. And I'm going to give it a try now, but you have to uh, stay a little bit longer tuned because first we have to uh, connect to Ganache. So let's just copy this and rename it to a simple wallet. And then we are going to import our simple wallet solidity file. And we are, let's just rename this too in order to make it easier to read. And then we have to specify in our uh, truffle config file, uh, which network we are actually want to deploy to. And there's a default network, which is uh, called development. 
and if you want to have more uh, networks and use them by name, then you basically just define them as a JSON notation. So let's call network and then I just, uh, let me see if I can uncomment this, I cannot. Let's just kind of uncomment it like this. All right, I have now in my networks object, I have one development object and inside this development object, I have a host, a port and any network ID uh, where I want to deploy to. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to open another PowerShell window uh, or a terminal and I'm going to open Ganache in there. Uh, Ganache CLI. You can also open the Ganache window, the normal one. Uh, it's just that you understand where your uh, Ganache is listening at. Mine is listening at 8545. So this is why I have the port 8545 here in my development network. Okay, so what are we going to do next? We are going to use Truffle to compile and deploy our simple wallet onto our ganache uh, um, onto our ganache uh, blockchain. Now let's give this a try. First, we have ganache running in one terminal and we are in the right directory in our other terminal or PowerShell window on Windows. And here we just basically hit truffle migrate. And what is going to happen is Truffle will compile the smart contracts, migration solidity and simple wallet solidity, and writing them to the build folder, to the contracts folder. And from there, it will then look into the migrations folder and look for the JavaScript files one by one. So first one, second one, and so on. They have numbers, and that's for a good reason. And then it will... Uh, take the these JSON files here, take the bytecode and deploy it with a transaction onto the network. So wrong window. Give it a second. All right, and then we see that we have uh, total deployments of two. And it usually, if you're on the live network, then it would also cost us something. Here, it doesn't cost us anything because we're in Ganache. All right, in this lecture, I really want to talk about again what happened during the migration because it's not so clear uh, what exactly happens in the background. And there's a little bit of magic going on with our Truffle framework. Now we hit in the last lecture, Truffle migrate. And then what happens in the background is Truffle is first going to look if the smart contracts in the contracts folder are actually already compiled. Now that isn't really doing anything with the deployment yet. It's just running the source code through the Solidity compiler and then saving the source code, no, the binary code into this build contracts folder in JSON files together with uh, what is called an ABI array. So if you have never heard of an ABI array, that is called an application binary interface. And if you want to interact with a smart contract, then you need this ABI array because on the blockchain itself, there is only stored this, uh, let me go here to the bytecode, this bytecode. And from the bytecode alone, uh, you don't know uh, how to interact with the smart contract that is running on the blockchain. So you need somehow the interface of your functions beforehand, and that is stored in this ABI array. So if you're doing um, a low level uh, uh, interaction with smart contracts from H uh, HTML pages, then you need the web free library. I have already opened here the documentation of the web free library. Uh, it's called web free JS, a JavaScript library that makes it incredibly easy 
to interact with a blockchain node from an HTML page. So what happens in the background is that uh, your HTML page, your browser is connecting to a blockchain node via uh, Ajax. So it's, an, it's, it's a background call where, where it's interacting with an uh, HTTP RPC from a blockchain node. And this HTTP RPC from the blockchain node is understanding um, the commands in a very specific way. And uh, instead of encoding and decoding uh, the inputs and the outputs yourself, you can use the WebFreeJS library to do that. Now, uh, if you have a look at, uh, for example, a webfree.edh.contract, and then uh, let me just open this here. And then you see that if you want to make a new contract interaction, then you need this JSON interface. And that's exactly what uh, the ABI is. So you would need to give uh, Web3 this JSON interface. And we don't need that because we are going to use Truffle. And Truffle is taking care of all of this, is abstracting Web3 away. And we are going to use Truffle contract. So there is uh, Web3 underneath, and then there is Truffle contract on top. And Truffle contract is really just using these artifacts. And in these artifacts, there's everything inside that Web3 also needs in order to uh, interact with the smart contract. That is the ABI array. Uh, if you want to deploy a new smart contract, then that is the bytecode. And if you have already deployed the smart contract, then uh, somewhere on the very bottom over here, you find the contract address for a specific network ID. And this is exactly what happens during migration. So the compilation will generate this JSON file. And as soon as the migration is running, uh, we are requiring this artifact here, which is actually requiring uh, this simple wallet JSON file. And then uh, during deploy, deploy, uh, this will write back the address of the smart contract that is then deployed on the specific blockchain we are on. So in our case, we just deployed it to the Ganache network and our Ganache network had the network ID, uh, this very long integer. And on this network ID, we have this address for our smart contract. Now, obviously, if you close Ganache and reopen it, then the smart contract is gone. So you would have to redeploy it. And I'm going to show you now how to do that. So I'm in my VS code, I'm opening a terminal, but uh, obviously you can uh, open the PowerShell on Windows or you can open any terminal on Linux or Mac that would work just fine. And inside my terminal, I'm opening my Ganache CLI. You can also open the normal Ganache UI or you can open the Truffle Developer Network if you've ever heard of it. As long as there is a blockchain node running uh, and you are the thing that you want to pay attention to is like this address and this port. So our Truffle knows how to interact with this network. So in my Truffle config, I still have the networks, the development network and the port 8545, which is the same as my Ganache that is running here. So it's really uh, telling my Truffle how to or where to interact with my blockchain node. And uh, 8545 is a pretty standard port for uh, Ethereum blockchain nodes. If you have uh, other developer nodes, uh, then it might be 7545 or 9545. Um, I'm not sure if there is a real standard for that. I just know the real blockchain nodes like uh, GoEtherium or Pantheon, they are running on 8545 by default. You can, you can also change that if you want to, but I'm just fine with 8545. So um, I'm letting this run in the background and I'm opening a second terminal. So be sure that you're not closing Ganache. Uh, that would be uh, counterproductive. And then I'm just typing in Truffle migrate, and then we will see if it is deploying the smart contracts again. And I believe it doesn't. Oh, it does now, because in older versions of Truffle, it doesn't deploy the smart contracts again. If on our uh, network ID, where uh, the network ID changed. Okay, so if you have the same network ID uh, as before, and maybe let me show you this uh, with a normal Ganache here. I would just open a normal Ganache with the UI so you can see what happens if you try to deploy two, two, uh, two times to the same network ID, even though uh, the smart contract is not running there anymore, then you would have to reset all of this. Let me, let me show you from scratch what I mean. So I've opened my Ganache, uh, network ID is 5777, and this is running on 7545. So I'm going to add another network here. And I'm calling this uh, 
me call this Ganache UI. And this is running on 7545. So now I can truffle migrate network Ganache. Oh, I forgot the E, doesn't matter, you know what I mean, Ganache UI. So it's going to deploy there. And if I, if I try to redeploy there, then it doesn't do anything because it says uh, our smart contracts are already deployed on this network. Network is up to date. So if I open my JSON file, then on the very bottom, I should see with the network ID 5777, I have this address for my smart contracts now. Now, if I restart Ganache, so all of my previous transactions are gone, and I try to redeploy this, then it will tell me, hopefully, an error message now. Oh yeah, so it's trying to uh, retrieve our migration smart contract, uh, but it cannot find it uh, because this address from the migrations file, let me just quickly check if this is really true and I'm not telling you any bogus things. So yeah, uh, on our network 5777 for the migrations file, this is a migrations contract, which is tracking the previous deployments of our smart contract. So this is uh, empty there because we have just restarted Ganache and there is nothing running on there and you get these error messages uh, on your development machine. So what I suggest to do and what I'm doing myself, and this is the solution to this whole problem where I'm trying to get to, uh, just add this reset and it will uh, start, just start from scratch. So it will uh, just deploy them again and uh, update this JSON files again. Now the address is obviously the same because the address is deterministically created um, from the address that is deploying the smart contract plus the nonce, but internally it is redeploying the smart contract. Now if I, if I try to do this again, uh, then the address should actually change because that's a new transaction um, and it's just updating the smart contract. So now the transaction has changed and the address changed too. Okay, with this, I think you are now the takeaway should be really uh, just that during the migrations, there is the contracts are deployed uh, and the contracts are compiled. And during deployment with this uh, deployer deploy after this uh, deployment happens successfully, then the address is really added to this build contracts JSON files. And uh, on the very bottom, you see the networks. And in the future, we are just working with these JSON files. They are called artifacts. And there's all the information to interact with the smart contracts on a specific network are in there. And we can really just use those to interact with our smart contracts with Truffle contract. And we don't need uh, any low level copy and pasting as you might have seen it in other tutorials in YouTube videos or in documentation pages. So you can skip all of that and you can really focus on the actual smart contract and then later on on the UI development. All right. In the next lecture, I, I want to start writing unit tests because our test folder is still empty here, uh, nothing inside. And I, I just really want to give you um, a good idea about the unit testing, because especially on the blockchain, that's really, really important. So I'll see you in the next lecture. All right, welcome back. And in this lecture, we are going to write our unit test, or at least the first one. And there will also be a small challenge inside. So stay tuned for some very, very important information here. We uh, finished off in the last lecture explaining all of these uh, migrations and JSON files and uh, how the Solidity files are getting compiled and deployed and what happened with the JSON files there. I still have it open here. I'm going to close this now. And what I really want you to understand now is how we are doing the unit testing. Now we have our smart contract here. And what we want to do is we want to test all the functionality that our smart contract supports. Now, for example, uh, we know that uh, our, or we want our owner, our admin to be able to send and uh, to deposit and withdraw funds, no matter if he's allowed to do so or not. But uh, we don't want anybody else 
to be able to uh, deposit and withdraw funds unless the admin added this person to uh, the allow address to send money function or this, this mapping here. So as long as this doesn't happen, we don't want anybody to uh, really deposit or withdraw funds. Now, how can we do that? Uh, one obvious way is we go and create our own addresses and start uh, interacting with the smart contract and see if this is working. But that's not unit testing. Unit testing should be automated. And it should always start from scratch. So uh, you wouldn't want this. Uh, you really just want to test the functionality. You don't want to test uh, a smart contract that is already running. And Truffle makes this extremely easy. So let me open up the Truffle documentation. on truffleframework.com and then you just go to the docs here and then on the left side you have the, the truffle point and here you find the testing uh, menu and here we are going to write tests in javascript now how do you write tests in in javascript in truffle truffle internally is using a testing framework called mocha uh, before I started using Truffle, I'm not a frame, I'm not a front end guy, so I've never heard of Mocha before. But uh, I know unit testing, and if you've ever done anything with unit testing, Mocha works pretty much like any other unit testing uh, engine. If you've never done anything with unit testing, then just stay on. You will immediately see how this is working. So uh, if you are coming from uh, JavaScript tests and you have used Mocha before, then just be aware that you have to use contract instead of describe. Now that's uh, something that uh, was a little bit misleading in the in the past. Uh, I've seen some colleagues spending quite some time uh, trying to figure out why their tests are not starting because they didn't use the contract function instead of describe. And once you when you start from scratch, you've never heard of that. Then that will be uh, pretty clear from the beginning on. So where do you put your tests? Your tests come into the tests folder. And they, uh, in our case, they will have a JavaScript, the JS extension. All right. Okay, so you use this contract and then inside this contract, you have uh, your actual tests. But uh, in order to actually use your smart contract, you have to get this artifact. So at the very top, and I'm scrolling down here to this first example here, on the very top, you have this uh, artifacts require and they are using a smart contract called Metacoin here. Uh, you can find this in the MetaCoin Truffle box, which I'm not opening now, but we are going to use our simple wallet. And inside this test, you first get your artifact and then you start your test, uh, your test file where you say, okay, I want to test this MetaCoin contract. And this is giving you, uh, this is calling, or the testing engine is calling this contract function and especially this callback function and giving you the accounts that are available in your blockchain node. So when you connect it to uh, Ganache, then this will have the 10 accounts from Ganache starting with zero, which is the first account uh, up to nine to index nine, which is the 10th account. And then uh, your actual tests start with the it functions. So it, and then you have a test description. And then uh, it, it, again, it, it uh, once a callback function and um, inside this callback function this will be uh, actually used then to run the, the test inside here. Um, so how do you do the actual assertions which is the, the most important part of the test. So you want to make sure that something equals to something. So for example in the MetaCoin test uh, this, this MetaCoin example if you've never seen it before you deploy a smart contract where you have a balance of 10,000 and they just make sure that the first account has a balance of 10,000 here and then it asserting that the balance is going to be 10,000 and if it's not 10,000 then it will give you an error message 10,000 wasn't in the first account and so on and so forth. Okay this is the the first uh, important part how the tests are structured and I just wanted to show it to you before we actually write a test. Uh, second thing is um, not as important, but still very important. You have uh, access to the underlying web free instance there. And we are going to use this in order to um, get the balance of our uh, wallet because our wallet is not storing any, any coins in there. It's really storing ether in the, in the wallet address. So in order to get the wallet address as balance, 
we have to call like web3.eth.get balance with the address of the wallet in order to make sure that uh, there is some ether or no ether in there depending on our test. You will see this in a second. All right, the, the third part or the last part I wanted to talk about before we actually start writing a test is the difference between async await and uh, the then uh, version of the test. So it all comes down to the promises in JavaScript. What are promises? Promises are a way to work with concurrency in JavaScript. Promises are uh, a wonderful construct to uh, work with things that are running in the background. So for example, um, let me give you an example over here. It should send coins correctly. And inside this, you have a function, for example, called meta.sendcoin. And this would set off a transaction to the blockchain node. And you might have seen it already uh, previously in our example with um, MetaMask. When we were getting our test ether, then we had to wait a little bit until the transaction is actually mined. So in our uh, JavaScript case, this would be a problem because um, first, we don't really want to wait for the transaction to be mined and just pause all the execution of the, of the rest of the code. On the other hand, we still want to be informed when the transaction is mined and then just continue where we uh, stopped off. So this is how uh, promises come in. So um, meta.sendcoin would send off a transaction but return a promise in JavaScript. And this promise needs to be so-called resolved. And when the promise is resolved, then it will uh, call whatever is in the then part of uh, behind the promise. So this is where then comes in place. Now let's have a look at the very beginning. Metacoin.deployed returns a promise. When the promise is uh, resolved, then in the then part, it will return the instance because deployed will resolve giving us the instance back. Um, then we can meta.getBalance, and that's going to be a call. It's a reading operation. It still returns a promise. And in the then uh, part, we get the actual balance back. So instead of getting directly the return of the balance, we have to wait for the promise to be resolved. Uh, it sounds super complicated. Um, it's actually not really complicated, but if it's totally confusing to you, then I can suggest at this point, uh, just hit Google and, and type in JavaScript promises and play around a little bit. So if the concept is totally new to you, then um, at this point, really pause the video, uh, go over to Google and have a look at uh, a very simple promises uh, JavaScript tutorial. Um, and the good thing is in our tests, I don't want to use the then method because I think this looks pretty, pretty confusing here for uh, a little bit of uh, sending stuff around and interacting with our smart contract and I actually want to wait for, um, uh, for a promise uh, instead of uh, working concurrently with it. So uh, instead of using the then method, I will use the async await method over here. And that should look much more easy to understand. So we have an asynchronous operation, uh, an asynchronous function here that uh, works with asynchronous or with promises. And then we can uh, define this as async function. And then we say await metacoin deployed. And instead of having a then behind, the await keyword will wait for the promise to be uh, resolved and then give you back the instance, so the, the uh, callback of the promise, so to say. And the same is with uh, instance get balance. It will give you directly the balance back. So you don't have to make uh, Metacoin deployed, then instance, instance get balance, or return instance get balance, then balance value of. So this is, um, I think it's much less confusing looking at this. So with this in mind, um, I want to stop here. There, is a, there was a lot of information in this uh, lecture and I want to go to the next lecture and I want to write our first test. All right, so in the last lecture we were discussing the Truffle Suite documentation and in this lecture I want to head over to our Visual Studio Code and write our first test. How do we do that? In our test folder, which is empty over here, I'm going to create a new file and this file also has an index and I usually have a lot of tests. So I either start with 001 or 01 and then underscore test symbol wallet.js. All right, 
right, so in our test folder, we have a 01 test symbol wallet.js. And I think for our course, we will just have one test file. I still can recommend to you to start with the index or start with uh, um, leading zeros here, just to have them ordered in the right way. Okay, going back to our uh, Truffle documentation, you can see that we start with uh, requiring an artifact. I'm just copying this now, pasting it over here, and we are going to require the simple wallet artifact. And then we start our contract, and this gives us the accounts. So I'm going to write here simple wallet test. And inside we write this it functions. Uh, let me just copy the whole part and then modify it. Uh, it should not be, or it should be possible for the admin to send and receive ether, for example, or let's say deposit and withdraw ether. So the first thing is we need our simple wallet instance on the network where we are going to interact with. So when we call uh, truffle test later, then it will take the development network. If we call truffle test network uh, ganache UI, let me make this E here, ganache UI, then it will take this network. And then it will look in our uh, migrations, uh, in our artifact, simple wallet JSON, for the network ID running over here and see if the uh, simple wallet is still deployed there. And when it's still deployed, then it will give us the instance back. So this takes some time and it's going to be a promise that is uh, returned over here. And the next thing is uh, what we want to do. We want to check if our uh, owner is allowed to send funds and how can we do that? We can just see here we have this is allowed to send function which is a, a, a view function and is returning as a boolean. So in our case, we are going to let is allowed to send wait simple wallet dot is allowed to send. Uh, this is going to be a call. And in our case, we want to give it the first address of our accounts array, which contains all the accounts from Ganache, which is automatically injected into our um, into our test case here. Okay, and the last thing is, uh, let me use the instance here, not simple wallet. Um, and then the last thing is, we have to compare or we have to assert this value on this R, so-called, um, the, the library underneath is called Chai. Let's have a look here on the very top of the uh, Truffle documentation in the writing test with JavaScript. There, Truffle uses Mocha testing framework and Chai for assertions, and Chai has a lot of different assertions, and one of them is uh, assert equal, and that just makes sure that our uh, it's giving you or it's not throwing an error if the things are equal. So say this, and then uh, the admin wasn't allowed to deposit and withdraw. Okay, how can we test this now? Um, I'm still having my PowerShell windows open. So in our first case, I have uh, I, I have two PowerShell windows open or two terminals open. Uh, one is running with Ganache, with the CLI version. You can run any, um, any blockchain node. And the second one is uh, just inside the, the project directory. You can just type truffle test and it will take the development network from the truffle config file deploy the smart contracts there and run the tests. Why it's going to redeploy the smart contracts there? Because um, it is running with a clean room environment. That means you're not starting or not interacting with the tests that are running already. Um, you're running, uh, you're deploying a new version. So you can always um, assume that you start fresh. So all your tests should be uh, assuming that there is nothing inside there yet. So our test is going through. Let's make the counter example false. And this should actually throw an error. So you see what happens if the assert equal is not working out. 
uh, you see that uh, plus it was expected to, um, it was actually, or it was, it should be the other way around. So you have the expected value here, you have to, uh, you have the actual value here, and then you have an error message if this is not asserting correctly. So let's run this again. So it was uh, true was expected, false was the actual value, and the error message is the admin wasn't allowed to deposit and withdraw. Now, obviously, uh, our tests are very very simple. And our smart contract is very simple, but you have if you have teams working on the smart contract, if you have uh, a larger uh, group uh, refactoring the code, then you really want to make sure that you test all the aspects of a code because uh, as soon as you, for example, change libraries, um, then you maybe have regression bugs or uh, bugs that are not that, that were working before and now they are bugs. So. Um, it, when you have unit tests for everything in the, in the best case, then you find those very, very easily. Okay, let's uh, write some uh, one more test. And before we head into our, um, into our challenge, and I want to write a test where you can, where, where it's obvious that adding an account and removing an account is working. So let's say it should be possible to add and remove an account. And that's going to be an async function again. And inside here we have again our instance of our simple wallet. And then um, we are going to see first if it's allowed for our second account in our account list and then uh, it should be negative so it, our second account in our account list should not be allowed to deposit and withdraw funds then we are going to add uh, the second account as our admin and then we are going to see if this is then allowed so it should be allowed and then we are going to remove the account again and then we see if this is not allowed so let's just uh, run this here let is allowed allowed before is instance is allowed to send uh, this is the second account so with the index one uh, it's going to be the second account in our account list in our ganache here and then we make an assert no equal and we expect false is allowed to send before the account was allowed is the error message and then we are going to make an await allow address to send money i think this was the yes and we want to allow the accounts one and it's automatically assuming that you are sending off this transaction from account zero so the account that deployed the smart contract is also the one that is going to be the one uh, who is sending off this transaction but it's going to take one argument which is uh, this account over here which we give it as an argument so uh, it should add this to the list. And now I can just simply copy this instead of typing. Allow midway. And this should be allowed now. And then when we call this, this allow, I think it was this allow, address to send money then is allowed and so here we have an error message the account was not allowed and the account was allowed and let's just run this and see what happens okay 
we have the two tests that are first testing. It should be possible to, for the admin to deposit and withdraw Ether, which is fine. And it should be possible to add and remove an account. So this is running through. Here is your challenge. Uh, the challenge is you try to find um, a test case which tests that it's not allowed for uh, the third account to send and withdraw or to deposit and withdraw money. So the test case is very similar to this test case, shouldn't be too hard. And uh, have a look if you can make this challenge. Uh, pause the video now. And if you want to see a sample solution, then just wait. And I will give you the sample solution after the challenge. All right. And this is how I would do the actual thing. Let me just copy this here. It should be very, very straightforward. Uh, it should be possible. It should not be possible for uh, account number two to deposit and withdraw ether. So this is going to be account, account number three with the index two, false. And that's it. And let's run the test. See if this is working. Okay, uh, that is working. And in the next lecture, we are going to write a little bit of a more challenging test with Web3. I want to show you how Web3 is incorporated into your, um, into your test cases here, where you can actually test for a balance. And I also want to test um, if it's possible to see the events that are uh, executed. And I also want to check if we can see, uh, if we can test an error. So if somebody is really who is not allowed is sending funds there and uh, if you can catch the error somehow. So i uh, see you in the next lecture where we are going to finish up our test cases. Now in this lecture, I want to finish up with the test cases and we already have some test cases here, but I want to add one more test case on the very top, which I find is very, very important. Uh, it, let me write this down for you. It, should be empty at the beginning. So we want to make sure that our account, our smart contract is empty at the beginning. How can we do this? Now in, uh, in, we, in our Solidity file, we have no uh, function that is called balance or get balance or anything. We could write a function to actually return the balance of the smart contract. How would this function look like? And I'm going to delete this in a second. So just have a look. Uh, I don't want to use it. Uh, in our case, this would be function get balance public view returns uh, uint and that would return um, address this balance. What would this do? This would return um, this contains the instance of this simple wallet, the address of this or the address function returns the address. And on the Ethereum blockchain, because everything is public, you can always query the balance of an address. So in our case, we would call get balance on the simple wallet, and then we can return the balance. But I don't want to do this here. Uh, because I still want you to have some interaction with Web3. Uh, we haven't had any, any much interaction with Web3 yet. And I want to show you an alternative method. So the alternative method would be to use Web3 for this. The first thing is still uh, let instance is a way simple wallet deployed. But now we want to get uh, the instances address only and use Web3 to query the uh, balance of our smart contracts address. 
And we can do this with uh, web free dot, hop, dot eth dot get balance. That would be the uh, function that we want to use uh, in order to get the balance. Where do, where do I, why do I know this and where do I get this uh, from? First of all, there's the documentation. Uh, let me open it again. From Web3, uh, there's this, it's called endpoints here, uh, web3.eth and uh, web3.utils. Uh, there's something inside and then there are some more endpoints which are not uh, listed over here, but uh, the most important part is web3.eth and there are some things that you want to uh, have a look into. First is uh, web3.eth.getaccounts, which returns you the account list, which is not necessary in our tests, but you might have seen it for uh, sometimes in other courses, in YouTube uh, videos and so on. So this really uh, web3.eth.getaccounts is going to fire off an AJAX request to your blockchain node, which is then returning the account list. And then it's just, it's a promise here and the promise is resolved and uh, is locked into the console log. And then it's giving you the accounts. In our case of Truffle, we don't need that because it's already injecting the account list, but internally Truffle is doing nothing else. The second thing is uh, webfree.eth.getbalance. Getbalance is giving you uh, the balance of an address. Why does it know that? Because the blockchain is public, it's a public ledger, and all the information on it is public. So webfree.eth.getbalance from an address will return a promise, and the, when the promise is resolved, it will give you the balance in way. And um, this is what we are going to use. Uh, the other thing that I want you to have a look into is webfree.eth.send transaction. Uh, which we are also going to use later in a little bit of a modified version. And this is going to add a transaction object. And inside there, uh, the transaction object is um, a, a JSON or um, a JavaScript object where you have a from address to address, a value, a guess, and you can define a lot more things, very, very low level. Uh, this is how it looks like web3.eth.send transaction. And then you have the curly brackets, and then you say from or data code or from to and the value um, and so on. So we are going to use this in a second. First of all, let's go back to uh, webfree.eth.getbalance. And you maybe have guessed it already. Uh, so in order to get our balance, let balance is webfree.eth.getbalance. And to get our instance address, we type in instance.address. And the last thing that we have to do, uh, assert, equal zero uh, should be the balance the balance wasn't zero All right, let's give it a try let's run this i uh, still have ganache open in the background so if you get any errors uh, reopen ganache again And this is returning us, let me quickly have a look, because I think this will return us. A string, so we might can do a value of that might solve our problem. Did I save this? Should be working. And you can always output here on the console, which is very, very helpful sometimes. So let me just debug this through with you. 
It shouldn't take too long to find the actual cause of the problem, which is funny because before uh, recording this lecture, I was actually trying this and it was working just fine. Ah, of course, uh, I forgot the await keyword. So if you don't uh, write await here, then this is actually returning the promise. So you don't want to return the promise. You actually want to wait for um, the promise to be resolved in order to get the balance. And that is what we're doing here. So let's test this again. And now the test should work just fine. And a little bit compiling and deploying. And now the test is running through. All right, uh, the second test is, uh, I'm going to write this at the bottom because later when there's a challenge, um, you can just add the challenge at the bottom. The second test is we want to check the uh, actual deposit events. Uh, and you might have seen it here when we are calling or when we are sending any money directly to the smart contract, then uh, without calling a function, then this fallback function will be executed, it's payable, and uh, it will emit a deposit event. And we want to check this deposit event now. And I'm running a new, a new test. Uh, it should emit a deposit event. All right, let instance is a wait. Simple wallet deployed, and then we are going to send money to the uh, simple wallet with send transaction. And instead of that free dot eth dot send transaction, which we which we could perfectly do, so we could do uh, from account uh, zero to instance address and so on. I want to do it in a way that I wrap it already into the Truffle contract library. So instead of a free.eth.send transaction, we can actually do instance.send transaction. Now that is pretty cool, is it? And uh, there we say from account zero value um, let's say the value is going to be one ether and we can use web free in our case. Let me show you what I mean. We can use web free to convert way to ether or ether to way. And there is a web free dot utils and it has a lot of different functions. And one of the uh, important functions is two way and from way. And uh, when we send off a transaction that is always calculated in ways. So we want to, if you want to send off one ether, then we have to first um, convert this to a uh, way. And instead of writing one and then 18 zeros, we can just write uh, web free dot utils dot two way and then one ether. And this will convert one ether to way. Now let's try this web free dot utils dot two way. And we have to put this uh, as a string or else we have to convert it into a big number object. And um, I'm usually just writing one ether. So in case you're wondering why I'm writing uh, this in quotes here. All right, and this, this one over here is returning us a results object. And I'm just going to console log this result object now so you can see what is going on here in the console. Okay, one typo. Okay, so what we get back is uh, this promise because we forgot the await keyword. Now let's try it again. I apologize for this, but I'm just a human. Oh, 
Okay, so what we get back is a results object. And in this results object, there is the transaction hash, and then there is a receipt. And this receipt um, is not exactly the receipt only, but um, underneath there is also a logs object. And this is what we are after. So uh, there is in the receipt is also the logs, but they are also pulling it out there. So here is what I want to show you. In the result.logs, there is one log, and we can, for example, check that the event that was emitted during this transaction um, is named deposit. So we could just write assert equal deposit result logs, the first log, and then the event. So that is checking if the result logs, and this is an array, the first uh, uh, the um, first element of the array is this object, and inside this object we have an event key, and we want to see if this is the deposit event. It is only filled with the logs uh, obviously populated if an event is actually emitted. So we want to see if the deposit event is always emitted. And then we also want to check if... Um, well, we want to check the amount that is uh, uh, um, um, deposited. So we want to check if the argument of the deposit uh, with the amount is the, the amount of Ether that we are going to send to the smart contract. So how can we test this? It's in this uh, arcs um, array in here. So let me just output this arcs array here result log zero arcs so you can see what is going on in there and from there we can actually uh, test two more things which is the sender and the amount let's just wait until this, uh, this is tested so you see that there is a result uh, this is this one here and the arcs object consists of four actually five but four different um elements and uh, that is the arguments by number so uh, zero and one and the arguments by name and that is underscore sender and amount so underscore sender over here and amount so what we can really do is we can just say um, assert equal and then web3.utils.2way uh, one ether dot amount and if we copy this then we can say the account zero should be the sender Let's see if this is working. And this is working. Now, here is a challenge for you. And uh, that contains this test case and the very first test case that we wrote. Uh, let's test and I'm not going to give you the uh, result for this, but I still want to uh, want you to try uh, test if you can deposit one ether and then have a look if there is one ether in the wallet and then test if you can send the ether back from the wallet to your account and then test if there is exactly one ether missing from the wallet again. And you can do this with uh, sending um, a transaction to the wallet and then using this um, send funds, uh, one ether back to your account zero and see if this is working and also if there is a withdrawal um, uh, event being published. All right. And uh, if you want to do this challenge, then pause the video now uh, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, this is the last test I wanna write before we are wrapping up this section. Uh, the last test is going to test if 
the error is happening. Um, and that is not as straightforward as you think, uh, because you actually have to test or you actually have to catch errors in JavaScript. So the first one is, uh, it should be impossible to deposit ether for account number two. Okay, we need again our let instances. Instance uh, from our simple wallet. And then uh, we wanna see, wait, send transaction from accounts one value. Let's just copy this here. We are going to send one ether from our first account. And we run this and let's see what happens. And we cannot do it uh, because our uh, second account is not in this uh, allowed to send uh, funds mapping. And we actually don't want to add him there. Uh, it was an error that we triggered on purpose. So um, how can we catch this error? We can catch this error with the try and catch block in JavaScript. So try catch error and then do something here. Right. If we test this now, then the error is gone. There you go. The error is gone. Where is the problem if we are going to assert equal um, false? false okay or maybe we assert equal here something and output an error here uh, where is the problem with that um, well we can we, we can do this over here somehow um, but I don't think it's really nice uh, what I want to do instead is uh, see if this is running through and expecting an error here. So if, if, if we expect an error, then this should actually not work. So right now it's going to assert equal over here and this is true and this is false. So true doesn't equal to false and it will output as an error because um, this is not throwing any exception. So it's never going into this catch block over here. But it should output an exception. Maybe I forgot to save. Try this again. Hmm. Let's see what happens over here, but I, I'm pretty sure it should output an exception here. This is our admin, so uh, our admin should be able to send actual money there. Ah, 
Ah, ah, of course. So uh, uh, I've made the trail catch block around the assert and the assert is throwing an error and it's being uh, caught by this try catch block. So that was very stupid and that's not something I wanted to show you. So instead, what I want to do is the right way to test uh, the errors over here. And when you expect an error, then what I do usually is uh, let error happen is false. So I make this outside. And then uh, when I expect this thing to go into the catch block, then I say error happen is true. And when I expect that there is an error, then I will say true is error happened. And the problem is the error message is no error happened. Although we expected an error. So if we execute this now, um, then this is, this is going to uh, execute just fine. There is no error that happened over here because we have our admin that is sending the money, but we expected an error and it should not be possible. Uh, it should be, um, we expect it not to be able to send money to our smart contract, but it's possible now. So no error happened. So if you're trying to change this to account number two, which is account index number one, then there is an error that is happening. Our error happen is going to be true and our assertion is going to be just fine. But this is the last thing that I wanted to show you before we can wrap up our section here. Now our now tests are working just fine and we can go into a wrap up. Wow, what a section. Uh, that was really a lot, uh, which we did here. Uh, you are, should be more familiar with Truffle now. Uh, we installed Truffle. I guided you around a little bit. Our contracts in the contracts folder, our migrations in the migrations folder. Uh, migrations are simple JavaScript files, which are going uh, upon migration. It's going to deploy this JavaScript file. Uh, no, it's going to deploy the Solidity file. It's going to compile the Solidity file and deploy it into the network that you defined here in the Truffle config. Now, obviously, there is a lot more to uh, see and to, to use Truffle for, especially in combination with HTML pages. So that's going to be our view layer. And that is something that I really want to do in the next section or sections where we are going to write a beautiful UI um, in um, Angular for our uh, simple wallet. Now, our simple wallet, uh, the UI, you can also find it already in our uh, repository. The link for the repository was in the welcome message for this course. So if you haven't had a look into the repository, then just do it now. And it should be fairly straightforward to run all the code and understand the code by now and see what is happening there. Um, also, at this point, I want to invite you again um, to join our Facebook groups where we are uh, having uh, developers uh, in our Facebook groups. And obviously, I would be delighted if you had a look at uh, my YouTube channel where I'm going to post different YouTube videos, um, in-depth hands-on videos about Ethereum development. And also, uh, if you want more news, then subscribe to my newsletter on my website, fomtom.at. All right, I'll see you in the next lecture. So before we start actually into this section, I want to quickly show you what is the outcome uh, when you finish the section. And because that's always the most fun part when you have finished the project, just to show off what it can do. Now, uh, after this section, at the end of the section, you will be able to uh, develop uh, distributed applications in HTML. And in our case, we are going to do this with our simple wallet solidity file, which is running on a blockchain. In our, my case here is running on Ganache. I've deployed it to Ganache using uh, Truffle Migrate from our um, Truffle. And we are going to use Truffle boxes for that. And we have a fully uh, a fully angular single page application running in the background. So we still have our uh, truffle here. We still have the contracts folder and we still have the migrations folder and the test folder. But now we have on top of that, we have a web app and our web app is going to be in the source folder and we have some node modules in there. Uh, we have 
uh, a build folder where not only our migrations are going to be in there or our um, artifacts are going to be in there we also will have our full html css javascript code okay this is going to be an angular app how does the app work now you're going to deploy it and you're going to be the, the admin and now i have a metamask which uh, has a different address than the address i used for migrating the smart contract meaning when i typed in truffle migrate it used the accounts from ganache and in my metamask i have a different account and i connected this to my ganache as well um, and i have allowed this account to be uh, to deposit and withdraw ether in my wallet there is zero ether in there now so what i want to do is the first thing i want to deposit one ether into my wallet so i just go in fill up the wallet from this address which is the address in uh, metamask here so our distributed application is going to automatically fetch the addresses from our wallet uh, i can type in an amount and i can hit deposit ether and this little metamask pop-up will appear saying yes i confirm one ether uh, plus a little bit of gas fee to transfer to this address of our wallet now hit the confirm button and uh, the transaction pretty much completes immediately and i have now one ether in my wallet then i can also send these uh, from my wallet i can send ether to a different address now let me just try this if i open up metamask and i switch to a different account copy the address go back to the account that is allowed to withdraw and deposit ether very important and then i say i want to send to this address uh, 0 0.1 0 0.5 ether send and now uh, when metamask opens i don't send any ether to my uh, wallet i just instruct the wallet to do something and that costs a little bit of gas so it's about three cents um, if we would run this on the live chain i hit confirm and now i have uh, 0 0.5 ether remaining in my wallet uh, on the blockchain and in my metamask let me go to the other account in my other account i have now 0 0.5 ether uh, which was sent from my wallet which is deployed to my account and the person who controls this is this account here so that's a, a very interesting concept and i really want you to get into the uh, the details of how to develop this in this section so what are we going to do in this section first we are looking at the truffle boxes the truffle boxes are a really uh, sweet and nice way of starting a web project where you don't have to set up anything really yourself you have to uh, get started with the actual coding instead of uh, spending time with a setup and i'm going to explain to you what a truffle box is in the next lecture then we are going to install and modify the angular box that it's working exactly the way how we are working with Truffle right now, just without um, Angular yet. And then in the lecture after that, we're going to add a front end for our simple wallet. And that's uh, gonna be um, this front end here. Uh, it's gonna be pretty straightforward uh, once you know where are the moving parts. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's gonna be one of the most in-depth and I guess the longest lecture for this section. And then at the end, we are going to deploy this smart contract, including the distributed application uh, HTML part to the Robston test network using the Truffle HD wallet provider. That means we can use the seed phrase from our MetaMask and plug it into Truffle to use the same private keys that we have in MetaMask. Now, having said that, I would say we get started with the Truffle boxes in the next lecture. All right, well, come back. And in this lecture, I really want to talk about the truffle boxes here. And let me just read this for you because it's the one very, very true statement. It's the easiest way to get started with truffle because it's basically boilerplates uh, with kind of empty or sample projects, which can be um, uh, modified to your needs very, very easily. Now, let me have a look at what a truffle boxes you know the truffle project already and on top of the truffle project you might want to have some 
uh, HTML part. And to do that, you might want to use some web framework, be it Angular or be it just vanilla JavaScript, or maybe you want to have uh, some React and so on. So um, instead of spending time with configuring those boxes, of uh, configuring those environments, you can use the truffle boxes. And let me give you a few examples. Um, for example, um, one of my favorite boxes is the Webpack box. Webpack itself is um, um, a packager for web-based files. So when you have JavaScript files, a lot of them, when you have CSS files, then Webpack will take care of packaging all of this together, including maybe node modules that you have running somewhere, or maybe even, uh, I think they also can pack up the Bower files if you use any uh, packager for front-end libraries. And they put it all into one large um, JavaScript file. And then uh, when you put it onto a server, then the, the client or the browser doesn't have to load thousands of files. It just has to load one file. And once that is done, it can use the whole front end um, in the browser without having to load more data. And uh, it speeds up loading tremendously. Now, how do you use this uh, boxes. I mean, um, it sounds all great, but uh, how are they really used? Let me show you this by an example. And I'm here in an empty, totally empty uh, project. I have nothing in there. And I'm opening a new terminal. And what I'm going to do next is I type in truffle unbox webpack. And what happens is that Truffle will download this Webpack repository, in this case. So there's a, if you hit the box, then there's an installation uh, description, uh, and then there's somewhere Truffle Unbox Webpack. And then um, if you run npm run dev, then it will open a, a dev server on localhost 8080. And there's also a link to the GitHub repository. So what happens in the background, if you type in Truffle Unbox Webpack, then Truffle will internally download this repository. It will run npm install, and npm install inside um, a directory which contains the package JSON file will go into the package JSON file and will download all these uh, dependencies into um, the node modules folder. And then at the end, when it has done this, then it will just output some helpful commands and will stop. Now let's have a look what happens on our console here. So it's downloading, setting up the box is uh, basically npm install, downloading the node modules, and then at the end it will tell you it's finished now and you can start using this. And you can see already now our directory has some files and contracts, migrations, tests, and also an app folder and the node modules folder is coming here. And then the rest is um, either for Truffle or for Webpack, um, the, the files that it needs to run this uh, project in here. So what is coming with this project? In this project specifically from Webpack, uh, they already pre-populated it with a so-called Metacoin example that you might have seen already somewhere. Uh, it's a little bit older, so you would have to uh, modify this um, example a little bit that it works with uh, Solidity 050 or 05X. Um, so I will not run it. I would just I just want to show you what it exactly does uh, when you run Truffle Unbox Webpack. Because in this um, co uh, course, we're not going to use the Webpack box. We're going to use the Angular box. So I'm going to uh, let it finish and then I'm going to remove this and I'm going to uh, install another box. Um, and the reason why I installed two different boxes is I just wanted to show you how these are done by using two examples. So let me uh, let it just finish up and then I will uh, I will pause the video here and then I will continue when it's done setting the box up and I will delete the whole folder and start from scratch. All right, as you can see here now, uh, when it's finished setting up the box, it takes a while, uh, but when it's finished, then it will say unbox successful suite. And then it tells you the commands, which are specific for this box. So be careful if you use other box that, uh, boxes that you're going to have a look what commands they are supporting. Now in our uh, specific course here, we are going to use another box, 
which is called the uh, truffle angular box, I think, let me have a look again. So I'm not telling you any wrong things here. So we're going to use this uh, Quintor angular truffle box. And uh, you want to run these commands first, uh, npm installs sg truffle, which installs the truffle version five, and then angular that she uh, installed angular CLI. And then obviously, you need the ganache CLI, which you probably have already installed. But if you haven't, then install the ganache CLI as well. And then uh, the most important part is truffle unbox quintor slash angular dash truffle dash box. And this will install this truffle box. Let me remove all of this here. Delete. Yes, remove to recycle bin. All right, and now our directory is empty. I can't do this on the PowerShell, but our directory is definitely empty. And I'm going to truffle unbox Kintor slash angular dash truffle dash box. And it will download, guess what, this GitHub repository and run npm install. And then you are ready to go. Uh, after that, it should output you the commands that it understands. So let me pause the video again, until it's done setting up the box. And then we'll take it from there. All right, the truffle box is installed, it took a while to install this actually much longer than I expected. But at the end, uh, all that counts is really that uh, these four points have these little green check marks uh, on the side. And you want to see this unbox successful suite and the commands now and when you remember back we had in the previous box we had compile, migrate and test those are the truffle commands that come with the truffle suite. And then specifically for the webpack box, we had uh, the linter, the development server and the building. Now with our angular box that looks a little bit different, we still have the truffle commands, obviously, because we're running truffle inside this truffle uh, inside this web project. But uh, in addition to that, we can uh, run the angular tests, uh, we can run the end to end tests, which I'm not going to cover in this course but uh, definitely gonna run uh, uh, ng-surf and ng-build. And when I'm not mistaken, and you can look in the package JSON, then you can see that uh, in there's a there's in the package JSON file, there's this scripts part where you can see what scripts are available beyond what is out. So if there's no output, then you can just have a look in the package JSON file and see what scripts are available. And you start them with npm run. And then for example, start and this would run ng surf. Or if you run npm run build, this would run ng build. So it's like a, um, a wrapper around uh, what you can do with this uh, project here. Now, before we are going to um, uh, do anything, modify anything with this project, here is your challenge. Um, go and run this project, uh, unbox the Angular box here, so that already will take some time. And then I want you to have a look into the contracts folder and figure out what changes you have to make in order to uh, make a, in order to make a truffle compile. And if you want to do this challenge, then pause the video now. If you just want to keep going, uh, keep going. And I will show you in a second what you need to change in order to make this uh, compliant to the current truffle version. All right. Now if I uh, compile this here, then this should work already. If not, maybe we have to make some smaller changes, but it should work. And it says writing artifacts to build contracts. And if you are trying to compile this uh, without any modifications, then it will not work, it will output you some errors. So here's what I changed. First of all, in the MetaCoin Solidity file, uh, I adapted uh, the Pragma Solidity version 050. And uh, the convert lib uh, here 050. So this little um, um, carrot shows you uh, tells you that the version number can be 05. And then anything at the end, 
but not larger than 0, 0.5. So it can be 0, 0.50, 0, 0.51, 0, 0.52, 0, 0.5, 999,999, but not 0, 0.6. Okay. Same with the uh, um, MetaCoin Solidity file, same with the Migrations file. Very, very easy, straightforward. You have to make it Solidity 0, 0.50 compliant. The rest is um, backwards compatible. Now, I would say we just give it a try and uh, truffle migrate. And this can only work if you're running actually uh, uh, Ganache CLI in the background. So let me run a Ganache CLI now. Listening on 8545, going back to my other PowerShell and running truffle migrate. This should deploy these smart contracts onto Ganache. And if it's not, yes, deploying everything. And after we deployed everything, we can run ng serve. npm run um, start in our case. Okay, so if ng serve doesn't work for you, uh, maybe because you're in a Windows environment, then npm run start works for you. And that's probably because ng is here just a node module. And either way, uh, ng serve or npm run start should start this Angular Live development server, which is then listening on localhost uh, 4200. And when we start this, then we actually run our sample project, which comes with this truffle box. So uh, I think every truffle box, I've not seen any truffle box, which is not coming with a sample project, a very simple project, which is doing almost nothing, just showing you that the environment was set up correctly. And from there, we can very, very easily adapt the default behavior of our travel box to match our simple wallet. And let it finish here. Should only take uh, another few seconds or so. All right, 92%. 95%. It somewhere should say compiled successfully. And then we can open our browser. And go to localhost. And go to localhost 4200. And see our truffle box. And I don't have any meta because I'm here connected with MetaMask to my truffle box. But if I would connect directly without any MetaMask installed, let me just open a new private window. And then I have no MetaMask plugin here. And then uh, the Trufflebox tries to connect directly to the blockchain node to port 8545. And that's going to be my Ganache. So here we have our 10 accounts from Ganache. And our first account has the 10,000 Meta. And we could send a uh, one meta to our second account. Let me copy this account somewhere. Copy it, receiver address, send meta. And now in our second account, we have one meta. Well, that's uh, all great. And in the next lecture, we are going to adapt our truffle box to work with our uh, simple wallet smart contract. All right, in this lecture, I really want you to uh, start a truffle box and get a little bit familiar with the difference between using it without MetaMask and with MetaMask, because this is the most confusing part for students or for people who have not done a lot with Ethereum development. And um, even for me, it's sometimes a trap when I see I, I deploy something directly via Ganache or via Geth and I have different keys um, and suddenly things are not working anymore. So be careful with that. Really get used to this. And I'll see you in the next lecture. All right. In the previous lecture, 
we were trying this angular truffle box and in this lecture what i really want to do is i want to go in here i actually i want to stop this uh, ganache here if you still have it running stop it and i'm going to stop this uh, development server so nothing is really running and what i want to do is i want to remove the sample project that comes with this angular box which is the meta coin and the convert lib and instead i want to insert our uh, simple wallet from our truffle directory we can remove the tests and everything good now in this here i have opened our previous project over here and here is a little challenge for you make this one our new angular project look like our truffle project without angular if you want to do this challenge pause it now i'm sure you can do it and uh if you don't want to do it or if you want to have the resolution just keep watching all right so uh, we don't need to actually copy the build folder. Uh, that's the most unimportant part. But we have to copy the migrations in, uh, sorry, the contract into the contract folder. We have to copy the migration into the migrations folder. And we have to copy the test into the test folder. And that's everything we have to do in order to make our new project compliant to our old project. One thing that I suggest um, is not super necessary, but I suggest if you modify a lot with the contracts, then you maybe want to delete the build folder. So it is going to compile everything again from scratch and you don't have any duplicates or anything in the build folder. Okay, that's pretty much everything we have to do in order to make our uh, Angular or prepare our Angular box uh, to work with our smart contracts. And the rest from here is really working in the source folder and modifying uh, this um, Angular app here in order to be uh, working as a simple wallet app, uh, not with meta coins, but with actual ether with our smart contract that is called simple wallet. All right. I'll see you in the next lecture where we are going to modify this. In the previous lecture, we have integrated our Solidity files and our migrations and everything that Truffle needs into our Truffle box. Now, obviously, our web app uh, in the source folder here is still working with the MetaCoin example that comes as the shipped example from this Truffle box. And in this uh, lecture, I really just want to take this web app and transform it in a way that it works with our simple wallet. And the way I'm going to do this is uh, because our uh, project is pretty simple. I will copy the MetaCoin or I will rework this MetaCoin example to uh, look like our simple wallet. And um, I'm going to start by simply renaming this uh, Meta directory here. And I'm going to call it um, simply simple. So it's going to be uh, for our simple wallet. And then our meta sender directory, I'm going to rename it to simple dash wallet. And then we have this meta sender component, uh, CSS, HTML, and uh, TypeScript files. So I'm going to rename these as well to simple wallet component. CSS simple wallet component HTML simple wallet component HTML CSS and TypeScript. Now there is uh, one last um, uh, uh, TypeScript file here in the uh, simple directory, which is for this whole module. Uh, that's the meta modules TypeScript, and this we are going to call uh, simple or simple wallet, whatever you prefer, as long as you are 
referencing it correctly in this app uh, module TypeScript. All right, so now we have our module, uh, which has still the same content as the, um, as the MetaCoin example. So we have to rework those, but we have a uh, lay ground for our simple wallet. There are a few more things to do. Um, the first one is over here in app modules TypeScript. We don't want to get the meta module. We want to get the simple module in simple and then simple wallet module. And then we are going to use this over here instead of the meta module, we want to import the simple module. All right, now we are importing the simple module, but it's not there yet. So we have to go actually to our simple wallet module transcript uh, TypeScript file, and then adapt this as well. So everything that says here, uh, first of all, we want to call this simple module because we're importing simple module here. And then we have to adapt everything that we are going to adapt in our simple wallet components file. So that's going to be uh, hopefully very straightforward. Simple wallet component, import this from simple wallet and then simple wallet component. Now the simple wallet component, uh, that's not there yet. Well, first of all, we have to copy and paste this over here as well. And then go into our simple wallet component TypeScript file. And here we are importing, let's go, let's go down first. Uh, over here, export class meta center component is going to be the simple wallet component. And from there, we can actually work. Um, we also have here the template, which is going to be our simple wallet component HTML and our simple wallet component CSS files so that everything has the right naming over here. And we are not working with the meta coin. Uh, we are going to work with our simple wallet JSON file, and that's going to be our simple wallet artifact that we are going to import here. Then we make some more changes uh, in order to actually uh, support our simple wallet functionality. And um, if you are here, I will stop the video here and go to the next lecture because I think that was already a lot of modifications that we did. Um, it's not working yet, but in the next lecture, we are going to start working on our HTML and our JavaScript or TypeScript in this case, in order to make the first uh, functionality, which is um, the depositing ether into our wallet. So that's the first thing that we're going to do in the next lecture. All right, in this lecture, I really want to work on depositing some ether. And before we can do this, I'm going to remove almost everything from our simple wallet components TypeScript file and from our simple wallet uh, components uh, component HTML file in order to start really from scratch. There are some more things that we have to do uh, to modify in our simple wallet component TypeScript file in order to make it work. And I'm going to modify this first. And during modifications, I already remove everything that we don't need. So the first thing is over here, uh, we have a simple wallet, any and not a meta coin, uh, any. And then uh, the model, um, I'm going to remove all of this. And so that only the account stays, you will see in a second why. And then over here in the ng on init file uh, function, which is the function that is 
being executed when this component is loading, then we are going to give it here as a web free service, which is going to initialize our artifact, uh, the simple wallet artifact, which we had before. And then we say, uh, this is obviously then a simple wallet abstraction. And this is going to assign over here the simple wallet in our class, in our simple wallet component class, the simple wallet is going to be assigned the simple wallet abstraction. And then we are going to get our uh, instance from our simple wallet. And we are going to um, remove this part here for now. And we are going only to output our instance for now. Then we can remove the send coin function over here, which we don't need. So it's going from here to here. Uh, I'm going to leave the refresh balance, but I'm going to remove the try catch block, I'm going to remove the set amount and the set receiver as well. Okay, all that's left is the ng on init, obviously the constructor, which doesn't do anything here, uh, the ng on init, which is the initialization function. Uh, the watch account, which is an interesting function. Uh, it took me a while to figure out what it actually does. Um, if you change your account in MetaMask, then this function will be executed and it's going to uh, execute this uh, refresh balance function. And the refresh balance function doesn't do anything at the moment. So it's really uh, an empty function uh, right now and we are going to populate it a little bit later. Okay, I'm gonna save this. So now I'm heading over to the simple wallet component HTML file, which uh, is in including this material design for Angular. Uh, it comes included in this Angular box. So you can you can use it or you, you don't have to use it, but I really like the design. So I'm, I'm continuing using it. And all I'm doing over here is having these uh, additional fields for depositing and with drawing money. So I'm going to have a new card here. I'm going to leave this card over here uh, because later on we are going to show the balance of the wallet, but I'm going to add a new card here. Met card and then met card header. And we are going to say here, fill up the wallet. And here we have a met card content and inside this met card content, we have a couple of form fields, uh, selects and inputs. So uh, on the one hand, I wanna have uh, a selection for the account, and then I want to have an input field, how many ether you wanna actually transfer. And then we have a button that says, uh, deposit the ether now. Uh, I'm gonna fill this up here, and then I'm gonna uh, re play the video after I've, I've written this, so it doesn't make any sense to actually write this while you're looking. All right, I've copied the content here already. And in our case, we have this uh, material form field, which is giving you a, a form field until here. And inside this form field, there's a select. I'm gonna show you in a second what it does. And uh, we have the accounts and the accounts from our uh, select in meta in, in case of MetaMask, we only have one account. But if we are going directly to our Ganache, then we have several accounts. And obviously, uh, we want to see, first of all, if the account is allowed to change uh, or to deposit. And second, how much is the, the balance of the account. Um, then we are going to, uh, for each account, uh, that's the NG4, uh, in our accounts array, 
we are going to show an actual option to select from. And when the option is selected, then the refresh balance will be executed and model.account will be populated. So the account here is, uh, the account here and the model is set on the first execution, which happens here in the TypeScript file on ng on init in the watch account. Uh, over here you have, um, when the account changes, then the model account is set to the first account. But if you, for whatever reason, want to change this account in this dropdown, I'm going to show it to you in a second, then uh, in the model in our account, the selected account will be then this account. So, okay, we have this uh, select field with all the accounts that we have in our account list. And then we have a form field with an input type text, um, an ID amount, and uh, a placeholder amount in ether. So what we want to is on change, actually uh, execute a function in our TypeScript file, set deposit amount. And this function is something we haven't written yet. And I'm going to write this function now with you together. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. So it's really just a set deposit amount. And then here we get the event. And inside we say uh, this model, and here we only have the account yet, but we also want to have the deposit amount, which is zero at the beginning. Deposit amount is e.target.value. Why do I know this? Because from our old code in the MetaCoin example, you see that there is a, a very similar function already in there. So I'm, I'm not a magician here. So this way you can set the deposit amount. And the last thing that we have to do is when somebody hits the deposit ether button, then on click, we are going to deposit some ether. So we have to call the deposit ether function. And our deposit ether function is going to be an asynchronous function because it's going to send off a transaction. And I'm going to write this function now, and I'm going to discuss it with you in a second. All right, so here's the deposit ether function. Let's go through the function line by line in order to understand what is happening here. So the first one is, uh, if not this simple wallet, then say the simple wallet is not loaded and they will do send transaction. When can this happen? Uh, maybe you are faster than your blockchain node can actually initialize uh, web free or get uh, return the instance of uh, the simple wallet. Maybe um, you have no connection, maybe something else went wrong. Uh, for whatever reason, this simple wallet here, the instance isn't set yet. So in case of that, we really have to stop here and can't continue. But that is the worst case. So in our case, we can assume that the simple wallet is initialized and we can get uh, an amount and a sender. And the amount is going to be the amount that is in the model deposit amount, initially zero. And when we set something over here, when we change uh, this input field, then every change will call the set deposit amount and our deposit amount will be set to a different number, hopefully. All right, let's go back down here. The second thing is the account. The account is going to be the account which is selected here in the select uh, element of our HTML part. Good, then we lock something. Uh, we set a status, which I'm going to cover a little bit later. And then there's a try and a catch block. Okay, inside the try block, uh, first of all, we try to get the simple wallet um, instance, which is uh, this simple wallet deployed, it returns you the instance. And then we are going to send a transaction. Uh, you've seen this previously in our test file. So we are directly calling on the simple wallet instance, send transaction, and from is going to be uh, this model account, the selected account, and the value is going to be the amount that the user entered, uh, translated to way in ether. Okay, and then there are 
there are basically two, two options that can happen. And I think they actually cannot happen, but I took this from the uh, previous Metacoin example, because I think if there is a transaction uh, error, then it will go in the catch block, but I still leave that in there. So I leave it up to you to test this actually. And then all we have to do is save. And then we are going to start a ganache in one console or one terminal. And we are going to npm run start in the other terminal. And then let's hope that we can uh, try this over here. Let me also remove the rest of the HTML here because it's really not necessary. contains ether and we are going to populate this functionality later. I just wrote, wrote this uh, beforehand. Okay, let me wait here until this is compiled. So we have one error that it can't find the symbol wallet JSON file. And if you think about it, why it cannot find the JSON file, then it can only be because we forgot to compile and migrate. So we have to truffle migrate first in order to actually use our um, simple wallet HTML or DAP front end uh, on our ganache. So you can see over here it's uh, doing something. And if I go back to our simple wallet uh, node file, then it should actually recompile automatically. If it doesn't, then you just control C, uh, stop the job, and then npm run start again. So our uh, this uh, Angular Live development server is actually listening for file changes. You don't have to stop it and, and restart it all the time. But if the file is not there yet, then it seems like it can happen that it cannot observe any file creation and it will not recompile automatically. So then you have to stop and restart. So let me just uh, see if this is working now. The start is always a little bit bumpy until you get the first working example, and then it should be much easier. All right, compilation is successful. And now we are going to open Chrome. All right, and here we are in our truffle box. It says, fill up the wallet. Uh, doesn't give us any address yet. Uh, we can enter some amount in Ether. Let me see if there is any errors. And uh, it says it couldn't get any accounts. Make sure your Ethereum client is configured correctly. Why can this happen? It happens because we just opened Chrome and our MetaMask is still locked. So I have to enter the password. And now you already see in the background automatically our uh, account is populated. Um, it doesn't contain an ether because I just started Ganache and in our account, I have no ether in there yet. So I would have to first transfer some ether into this account or the other way, I uh, just circumvent uh, MetaMask completely. And I'm going to open a new uh, in private browsing window. You can do this by going here, uh, opening new incognito window or control shift um, N or command shift N on the Mac. And then I go back to localhost 4200 and I'm directly connected to my Ganache now without any MetaMask in between. So that way I have my 10 accounts here in this drop down. And if you look at the other browser window, I just have one account, which is the account that MetaMask gives me. So a huge difference here. All right, now I could go in there and say deposit one Ether. And it says just transaction complete because I don't have any MetaMask in between. 
it won't uh, show me any pop-up or any any other confirmation window. It will just uh, transfer the ether. The other thing you see here is that the balance uh, is non-existent. So the wallet contains and there is nothing ether. And in the next lecture, I really want to populate this balance over here. All right, welcome back. And in this lecture, we are going to update the balance uh, so that the wallet contains some ether. And I'm going back into our code. Let me show you this over here. And in our HTML, we say the wallet contains and then model balance ether. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to add to our model a balance. And I'm just going to call this zero for now. And if uh, I save this, it's automatically recompiling. And when the compilation has finished, then it will show a balance. Let's wait until the compilation is finished. And here we go. It says after reloading, currently reloading still. Three, two, one. So zero ether. And this is uh, the balance that we want to update now this variable, the model balance. And we do this in our watch, where is it? Refresh balance function. And I've already uh, prepared some code for that. And I will paste it over here. Uh, but we have to do some more uh, changes to the underlying um, web free um, abstraction in order to actually access the web free object to get the balance of a specific address. Now let me copy and paste the code first and then walk you through the code. All right, I have pasted the code over here. And let me walk you through the code real quick. So first of all, it's an async function. So we can use the await keyword again. And we get the instance of our simple wallet. Let's output a little bit. Debugging is never bad. And then we want to get the simple wallet balance. And for this, I actually want to get access to the web free object. But in the original source code of our uh, Angular box, there is in the web free service, there is no get web free. Let me show you what I mean. So in our uh, source app utils, there is a web free service uh, TypeScript file. And this one is basically just initializing the web free object, what you might have seen if you have done anything with web free, then you probably have seen something like, if window web free is not undefined, which is the case of MetaMask, then uh, this web free or window web free is new web free uh, with the current provider, or else just use a fallback, which is an HTTP provider uh, going to, for example, localhost 8545. So that is the, the very, very uh, normal way of initializing web free. And that happens on load. So in our case, we don't have access to this web free object, it's abstracted away from us, it's just living here in this web free service class. And what we really want to do is we want to get access to this web free object with uh, a function maybe called get web free. So it just returns us this web free. But that's not all, it must also be an uh, asynchronous function in order to actually uh, get web free in case it's not yet bootstrapped. So it's a little bit tricky. I have prepared a function for that. And I'm going to copy and paste it over here. And I'm going to with you through the function in a second. Just copying and paste it over here. So initially, when we start using our app, web free is not initialized yet. And it is initialized on the first uh, call of bootstrap web free. So until then, uh, web free is is empty. So it isn't it isn't there yet. So in our function or in the function that I have here, I say, if it's not initialized yet, then uh, make a little bit of a delay, like wait 100 milliseconds, and then try to return this again, or else 
I mean, if it's already initialized, then just return the web free. So this one, this construct really makes sure that you cannot get an empty web free object. Took me a while to figure out. Uh, here you have it. It's working. Okay, going back to our simple wallet component. Uh, really, all that we have to do here then really uh, is we are going to the web free service, which is uh, coming in here. And then we are saying, get me the web free object. And because it's a promise, uh, then return webfree.eth.getbalance. Uh, that returns a promise as well because we are using web free 1.x or the version 1. So this one will return a promise. And we are going to get the balance from the deployed simple wallet address. So in our case, we really just get the balance from our simple wallet address and because it's a public ledger and so on. So everything is going to be public and we can get the balance of our address anyways. And so we get back a promise and this one will wait for the promise to be resolved. And basically that is our simple wallet balance. Now, our balance is in way. Let me just save this and let's see if this is working. So we have uh, a balance in way now. And now the challenge for this lecture will be convert this balance over here, right here to ether. If you want to do this challenge, then stop the video now. If you feel like a little bit too much or uh, you're already overwhelmed with how we get web free, then just continue watching and just try to follow along. And it's really not, not that hard. All right, there are two versions how you can do this. Uh, either you get the web free object itself or you get the web free object from the simple wallet. Uh, for example, this simple wallet web free. And then you can say from way to ether. Let's save this. Um, I think you can use lowercase ether. I hope so. I didn't make a typo now. Let's wait until it's reloading. Should take a little bit, but not too long. So it's already reloading. And here we go. The wallet contains one ether. Now in the next lecture, I really want to go with you through the uh, process of adding address to the whitelist and removing addresses from the whitelist. It's going to be another large lecture hands on. Welcome back. And in this video, I really want to take care of these two functions, uh, allow sender to send money and this allows sender to send money. And this will be uh, in this uh, lecture, uh, one of them will be a challenge. And the other one, I just want to show you how I would do it. And at the end, anyway, I resolve it. So um, just stay tuned. Uh, we are going to work in these two files, uh, the simple wallet component HTML and the simple wallet component tra uh, not transcript uh, TypeScript file. So uh, those are the two files that we are going to work in. And basically what we have to do is we have to create it on a Met card. I already prepared this and I will just uh, paste it over here and then guide you through the code step by step, really line by line that you understand what is going on. So let me just paste it over here and uh, be back in a second. All right, I've pasted the code here and it's really, really straightforward. So I have another Met card and I have a Met card title. It says add address to the address whitelist. I have a Met card content and there is a form field, it's an input field. And uh, here it gets a little bit more interesting. It uh, unchanged, it calls a set whitelist address uh, with the event, with the change event. Uh, so it's very similar to our um, uh, select option here where it has, uh, no, sorry, to our amount option here, the amount input field where it says set deposit amount with the event. So very, very similar. We need this uh, set whitelist address. And then we have a button over here, which has an on click event and an on click event, uh, it calls a function in our TypeScript, which is, uh, add allowed address. And the button uh, has a label uh, and the label is uh, allow address to deposit and withdraw ether. Obviously, this can only be called from an account, uh, which is the admin of our wallet. 
Now let's head over to our simple wallet component. Um, here we have a function called, uh, I just copy and paste this over here and set whitelist address with the event. So that is the first thing that we need to do and we call it whitelist address, which is the e-target value. And we have to add this whitelist address also over here to our model. And then we have a function which is called add allowed address. And I also have prepared this function and we'll just paste it over here. And instead of writing it, I will just explain to you step by step how this function uh, works. So I'll be back in a second. All right, I've added the function add allowed address. And let me go go with you through this function step by step. So the first thing is, uh, if the simple wallet is not initialized yet, not loaded yet, then we can't really uh, add any functions. So we have no access to our blockchain node, uh, or we are just too early, or maybe our blockchain node didn't uh, load or respond yet. So uh, if that's not loaded, we can't do anything. So we return here. But in most of the cases, I would say 99%, we hopefully have a working simple wallet and we can continue over here. Um, so the first thing is we have to get the whitelist address and the whitelist address is the address that we get over here from this function. I just added is the whitelist address from the set whitelist address from our simple wallet component HTML from this input field, which is on every change when we enter something, it's going to set this whitelist address and is setting the whitelist address variable. Now that's good. So we have this in there and then somebody uh, presses the button and it's calling this function. So we have the whitelist address here. We can output something in the console. We also set a status. It's this little pop-up window and this little, uh, how you call it, the toast window. And then we have a try catch block. And inside this try catch block, we try again to get the instance or a simple wallet it's uh, this simple wallet deployed and we can call await uh, instead of uh, having the, to deal with the promise in a way that this simple wallet deployed dot then dot and so on. So we can just use this await because we have the async function here. And then we start a transaction and the transaction is a function interaction. Uh, it's calling deployed simple wallets or the instance allow address to send money with our whitelist address. And this is this allow address to send money is exactly this function here, which is in our ABI array and our uh, truffle contract library, which is the underlying library, will take care of translating the solidity function to a JavaScript function via the uh, via the uh, how's it called the artifacts. So these JSON files have this ABI array, and they're inside is somewhere allow address to send money. And when we plug it into a truffle contract library, then this will automatically make a JavaScript function out of it. So when we call this function, then the truffle contract library will take care of translating it in a way that our blockchain node understands it and will then uh, send off an Ajax request. And we can also test this obviously. Uh, before we test this, let me just quickly talk about the catch block. If there's an error, if there's anything uh, wrong, then we are not outputting error sending coin, we are outputting error sending transaction C log. Okay, now let's give this a try. I still have uh, my note here. If you don't have or well, the, the Angular development server here, if you don't have it still open, then just run npm run start. Where is it here? NPM run start. Uh, it should open this Angular live development server on port 4200. And on the other node or in the other terminal window, I have my Ganache running. So I still have my contracts deployed there. If you don't have, or if you closed, if you started from scratch, open Ganache, run Truffle migrate, very, very important. Don't forget Truffle migrate, and then open uh, the Angular live development server. And then just simply point your browser towards uh, this localhost 4200, and you should see add address to whitelist. Now, which address do we want to whitelist? 
let's whitelist an address from our uh, MetaMask, maybe. Um, here in the other window where I'm not in a private mode, I'm here in MetaMask, so I'm just copying this here and I'm going to paste it in my private window where I have no MetaMask and I have uh, the first account selected. And I'm going to paste this in and hit uh, allow address and you see here transaction complete on the bottom. Um, so there's no problem. If I would go ahead and do the same with an address uh, over here from the drop down, which is not the owner, which is not the person who deployed the smart contract, then it would give you an error, error sending transaction C log. All right, I hope that's clear because this uh, input field is influencing uh, this model account here. So every time we change the input field, where is our HTML file? So every time we change the input field, which is this uh, select here, then our model account will be replaced with the new account that we selected. And when we are sending off the transaction over here, uh, at allowed address, then we are using a specific account to send off this transaction. And if the account is not the same that deployed the smart contract, which is the owner, which is in our simple wallet solidity file in the constructor over here set as the owner, then only the owner can call at ad, allow address to send money. And this one will fail if it's not the same address. All right, so here's your challenge. Do the same with the disallow address to send money function so we can uh, remove people again from our allowed list. Okay, so here's how I would do this and it's actually fairly, fairly straightforward. Let me show you how I would do this. First of all, basically copy this card here. Remove address from address whitelist. Uh, address selector. This allow this address. say remove whitelist address and then we have here a button remove allowed address and here we call it this allow address to deposit and withdraw ether and then we need this function and this function so the first of all I start with the remove whitelist address function and it's also quite straightforward I just copy this and say remove whitelist address and I have to add this over here and then I have another function which I need to copy which is the add allowed address function and then we'll paste it over here and I call this function remove allowed address. Let's call this blacklist address. Whitelist address. And then we say this allow and here we have a blacklist. So that should do. Let's save this and let's wait until uh, the compiling has finished.
right that looks good and we can go back to our angular truffle box we have our two input fields let's copy again our account from metamask just to have an account here And the transaction is complete because we still have our first account selected here. Now here's an interesting uh, situation, which I just spotted before. It might have been a typo from myself. If I'm selecting a different account now, I can still call uh, this allow address to deposit and withdraw ether. And uh, if we had made all of our unit tests, then we probably would have seen that over here in our simple wallet, there's actually a modifier missing. So our allow address to send money can only be made by the owner, but this allow address to send money can made by everyone. So uh, here's an important lesson that we've learned. If you want to make production code, write unit tests for everything. It's extremely important to test all aspects uh, because it's very easy to just uh, make a small mistake with a huge impact. Now this doesn't have a huge impact here, but uh, who knows what kind of code you want to write in the future. Um, here's my message to you. Test, test, test. Having said that, uh, thanks for watching this lecture. And I'll see you in the next one, in the last one for this section, where we are completing our send funds function. Okay, welcome back to the last lecture of this section, probably. Um, we are going to add this send funds function from our simple wallet over here, so we can interact with this. Uh, it has two arguments, an amount and a receiver, and uh, basically tells the wallet, uh, give this person here this amount of ether from your own uh, balance. So the the address can have a balance and uh, everybody who is on the whitelist can then transfer ether away from the wallet to this person. Sounds straightforward. Let's dig right into it. So I'm going back to my simple wallet component HTML and I have again prepared something and I want to go with you through this code step by step. All right, I've pasted the code. Now let me go with you through this code step by step. So you know what's going on. Uh, I have another uh, material card and the title is send ether from wallet to address. And here comes the important part, the two input fields and the button. So we have these two arguments. Uh, the one is the address, which I have here first. And the other one is the amount. And we have these two functions here again in the input fields, which are called on every change. So if you paste something, if you write something, they are going to be called and we have to first add those to our TypeScript file. And the other thing that we have is a button. And when we click the button, then the send from wallet function will be executed. And the send from wallet function will take these two arguments and then interact with our smart contract. Now let's start with the set send to address and set send to amount functions. So let me just go over here and duplicate this one. Set send to address, send to address. And the other one is sent to amount, send to amount. And we have to add those two to our model. So we can interact with this. Send to address and send to amount. This is an integer, so it's going to be zero. All right, and then we need a function which is called send from wallet. And obviously, I've prepared something, so you don't have to look at me typing this. Uh, but I want to go with you through the code step by step after I've pasted the code. All right, so here is the code. Uh, it's an async function again, because we have an interaction with our smart contract sent from wallet. Uh, again, obviously, if our wallet is not initialized yet, because the blockchain node isn't loaded yet, or for whatever reason, we have to stop here. But uh, in the majority of cases, we can continue here. And then we get the 
send to address and the send to amount which was entered hopefully previously. We could add some checks here if they are not entered correctly, uh, but I just assume that the user is an experienced user who is going to enter a valid uh, address and uh, some amount. And then we have a console output which we would see in the web developer console sending this amount to address here. Uh, we have a status, which is this little toast window, which comes always on the bottom. And then we try to get first our wallet instance. Uh, and then here's the important part, which is the, uh, the promise, uh, the, the instance dot send funds, and we give it these two arguments that it needs the amount and the address. And that's it basically. Basically, so here's the, the problem with this, and it's also the challenge. Now, let me first run this and see what happens with our uh, how this how this actually works. So first of all, I just save this, and I need it, uh, I need to wait until it recompiles. Compiling is successful. Let me open the browser. And now I'm going to first have, I still have one ether in my wallet. So I'm going to send from my wallet to my account in MetaMask, which has zero ether at the moment connected to the same Ganache network. I'm going to send uh, with my account, which is allowed to send and withdraw and deposit ether. I'm going to send to this address one ether. And let's see what happens. There is an error. What is the error? It's out of gas. That is interesting. What if you're sending? It's also out of gas. So let's see what is going on here. If this is out of gas, maybe we can just provide more gas. So I'm in this send funds function. And the last argument is always a configuration object. Uh, which is kind of optional, but I found in production that you most of the time need this from here, even though it's already defined at the beginning. But uh, let's add some gas and the gas, uh, let's say we give it 450,000 gas, which is more than enough for almost everything that you ever want to do with this simple wallet. And uh, you might know, or you hopefully know by now that when you uh, provide gas in a transaction and the, the the smart contract that is using up some gas, uh, but not everything, then the rest of the gas will be returned to you. So you can always provide more gas than it actually needs, and it will be refunded to your account later. So let's say if we have, uh, if we pay one guay per gas, then it will cost you a little bit, but the rest will be refunded in ether back to your account. Uh, let's have a look again, send ether to this address. Okay, now the transaction is complete. And let's have a look how much we actually send. So this the wallet still contains one ether. This is very strange, even though we send one ether. And this is what I wanted to show you actually. Uh, if we go to our MetaMask now, where is the MetaMask? The MetaMask still contains zero ether. That is very, very strange, is it? Here's the challenge. Find out why and fix it. It might be a little bit of a harder challenge. If you spotted the error already, then you know what's going on. But if you don't, then just give it a few minutes, try to figure out what's going on. If you want to have a hint, then just stay on for uh, a little while, I'll give you a hint. And then after that, I will solve it. Okay, here's a hint. Uh, if I add in here, 
let's say a very large amount, the transaction is still complete. So what is going on here? You already know what's going on. Let me try one more time. Add another zero. We are coming closer. All right. I will resolve this we forgot to actually convert this to ether. So instead of uh, assuming that we have one ether here, we actually accept here the input in way. So we would have to enter like one and 18 zeros uh, to have one ether. So if you want to have this in ether, then we have to convert this one to way before we send it off. Um, if you still want to do it, then just go ahead in the code now and fix the problem and pause the video again, or else I will fix it for you in a second, just to show you how the sample solution would work. All right, let me fix it. Uh, we are here in our send from wallet function, and uh, we have the web free or here already. And let me just add in here web free dot utils two way and then send this in ether and here the same web free utils two way and the amount should be from ether two way. Let's see if this is working. Obviously, we first have to populate our wallet a little bit more, because now it doesn't contain one ether exactly. Wait until the recompiling is finished. And here we go, compilation successful, go back to our browser. Here we have now the wallet contains 0 0.88 eight, nine, nine, and so on ether. Let's add in another ether from our address. Transaction is complete. Let me reload. And now we go and now we go to now we go and send to our address from our MetaMask one ether from the wallet. The transaction is complete. Uh, I can reload this page just to see the updated balance. I guess we just forgot to refresh the balance after a successful transaction. And we can go to our MetaMask and we see that we first sent money from our Ganache address to the wallet and then from the wallet to our address in MetaMask. So that's it for this section. And uh, I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.